Do you know the Sangyong brand? Yes, they make some of the ugliest cars in the world, including the Action, Chiron, and Musso. A while back, the brand boasted its cooperation with Daimler. Today, the Korean brand is controlled by India's Mahindra and Mahindra conglomerate, and it's got the B crossover segment in its sides. Sangyong Tivoli, because this is the B crossover segment contender in question, looks like a love child of Nissan Juke and Kia Sol. Both have bold yet questionable design, and the Tivoli is slightly bigger than either of them. The name Tivoli predictably was derived from an Italian town, but rumor has it that someone up in the marketing department liked the fact that Tivoli, spelled backwards, reads I love it. The car had its European debut at the 2015 Geneva Motor Show. It draws attention of other drivers, but I'm not sure whether it's the design or the fact that they have no clue what they're looking at. Black A and B pillars, together with a black stripe on the C pillar, make it seem as if the roof is floating, an effect similar to Kia Soul. But compared to Kia Soul or Nissan Juke, the Sangyong Tivoli front is more about the headlights, with LED day running lights rather than the grille. Under the bonnet of this example is a 1.6 128-horsepower petrol engine. On paper, it resembles the older Gamma engines used by Hyundai and Kia. The other choice is a 115 1.6-liter diesel. In the back, we see pronounced wheel arches, interesting-looking lower spoiler, and a flattened boot lid. And the Tivoli boot is huge. At 423 liters, it is the second largest in the segment, right after the new Honda HRV. Other competitors have boot volume lower by at least 50, 60 liters. This is a front wheel drive Tivoli, so there is no spare or all wheel drive mechanism. In the all wheel drive version, the boot is smaller, but there is a double floor, which is not even an option for this version. But there is a 12 volt socket. There's a lot of space in the back. I fit behind the driver's seat, even if it's moved all the way back. And the driver's seat is unlikely to be moved all the way back, even with a 7-footer behind the wheel. I'll tell you why in a moment. There is also good headroom. These elastic bands instead of seat pockets are similar to those we've seen in the Renault Capture a few years back. It's good to keep a map, less so if you want to store your phone here. And if the kids want to play Guitar Hero, you can always remove the strings. There are cup holders in the armrest and place for bottles of water in the door bins. The floor is almost flat. In the front, things look a bit strange. On the one hand, the dials are modern. There is a touch display in the middle, but the buttons are like from a cheap 1990s stereo. You can change the light color on the instruments cluster, but even at night, the dials and the center display are too bright, just like in Kias and Hyundais. Have you ever wondered why would you need an HDMI port in a car? According to the Sangyong salesman, this is for a tablet for the kids who are sitting in the back, just in case if I would want to show something on that tablet to my kids from the front display here and only, only when the car is stationary. Hmm. Can you smell the BS? Right. Anyway, this potential tablet would be here. This is actually, well, this is not a tablet, obviously, this is a instruction manual for this car. But anyway, this tablet would fit nicely here in the, uh, in the compartment under the center armrest, which is very convenient. And then there was a suggestion that perhaps it would be possible to hack this system here so that I could have pictures or kind of mirror link on the screen here. So then I could launch SatNav on my tablet and stream it via HDMI to the screen here because the Tivoli doesn't have its own SatNav. There is also a decent sized glove box, cup holder, place to store bottles of water in the door bins, two 12 volt sockets and a USB port. And quite comfy seats, although the headrest is a bit too far forward for my liking. But this is where we get to the hypothetical seven-footer who will not slide the seat all the way backwards unless he or she is a giant orangutan. Why? Because you can adjust the steering column only vertically. 
By the way, both seats are heated, but the driver's seat is also ventilated. There is even climate control setting memory function and access as well as ignition are keyless. Once you start the car, you immediately notice three things. First of all, mm, there is a indicator here between the dials uh, on the screen and it shows you which way the wheels are turned, uh, which way you left the wheels turned. Uh, this is something that uh, we know from Land Rovers, Range Rovers, off-road cars basically uh, and it's something that uh, comes up in the off-road mode. Here it tells you which way the wheels are turned so you don't uh, start straight and hit something. Okay, a safety feature I suppose. Uh, the second thing is the uh, tire pressure monitoring system. It always tells you what the pressure is and you have to tap the trip button here to go to uh, let's say fuel consumption which I find more relevant and uh, yeah I suppose Sangyung must be very proud of this tire pressure monitoring system because it shows you pressure in uh, different wheels and the third thing you always have to confirm that you know that you're gonna kill yourself if you use the infotainment system and don't keep your eyes on the road you sit up rather high behind the wheel even for a crossover but uh, the window line is also rather high so many of you may end up raising the seat even further especially that uh, your steering column adjustment uh, is just uh, vertical so um, you might want to adjust your seating position raising or lowering your seats while driving I noticed more switchgear and ideas I know from uh, Hyundai's and Kia's for example the buttons on the steering wheel look like from old Hyundai's well old Korean cars in general and then there are the buttons here over my left knee these look like from a Kia or Hyundai right now uh, this is where the uh, heated steering wheel button is and this is also where the automatic gearbox mode button is. So there is a power mode, there is a winter mode and there is a normal mode. Notice there is no eco mode. Another similarity to Kia and Hyundai is the steering mode switch. In Kia Hyundai it's called flex steer or something and here it's called probably intelligent steering or something. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, it switches between a normal sport or comfort and uh, also like in Kia and Hyundai it makes no difference whatsoever I can't feel any difference the six-speed automatic gearbox comes from iSCENE the same guys who make gearboxes for BMW 2 Active Tourer is it any good? Well, in normal mode, especially at low speeds, you have to press the accelerator a bit harder to get a downshift. But, you know, it's, it's getting there and in uh, power mode or sports mode, downshifts come much quicker, but also upshifts are much slower, as expected. There is also a manual mode. To switch it into manual mode, you have to shift the lever left towards you and then uh, you can operate the manual mode well there are no flappy paddles as you probably noticed uh, so you have to operate it with a button here on the side of the gear lever which looks a bit like an overdrive button from an older gearbox you probably idiot sorry about that this is what happens when uh, people overtake and they don't have power. That was first generation smart. So anyway, um, back to this gearbox. Uh, I can operate it with a button here and it looks like an overdrive button from older gear shifters. Uh, there is also an eco indicator which tells me it's time to shift. Does it shift by itself? Let's see. Yeah, even in manual mode it will do the shifting for you if uh, it thinks that you forgot about the manual mode. So, that's the gearbox for you here. Sangyung doesn't say what's the 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time. I made my own not very scientific measurement with a stopwatch and uh, I suppose it does 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in about 12 seconds. Fuel consumption 
Sangyong says this thing will do about 10 liters, 10 liters and a bit per 100 kilometers in the urban cycle and about seven in combined six extra urban. And I think these figures are realistic. Otherwise, the Tivoli is very much like Kia Soul to drive. It doesn't roll too much in the bends. The suspension is relatively quiet. As you can probably hear, there was a stretch of bumpy road and uh, some cars are less quiet, some cars are more quiet. This one is definitely quieter. Uh, also, at higher speeds, I think this is quieter than the Soul. The aerodynamics are better. Although the Tivoli comes with a reversing camera, I wouldn't mind parking sensors too. Uh, there is a vertical boot lid. The C pillar is quite obtrusive, so the visibility is not that good. The Tivoli turns heads, which may be good if you want to stand out from the crowd and not pay too much money. And unless you live in Korea, you will definitely turn heads. Sangyong sells about 140,000 cars globally, most of them in Korea. So chances are your neighbor is not going to get one of these anytime soon. I think the Tivoli is a step in the right direction for Sangyong. And so is the price, which starts at 15,500 euros, well below the Japanese and Korean competition, similar to the French B crossover segment contenders. This Sapphire front-wheel drive petrol model with automatic gearbox costs 24.5 grand, add 2 grand for all-wheel drive, 4.5 grand for a diesel. Good news is the 100,000 kilometer five-year warranty. Check how far is your nearest dealer or service station, or whether Sangyong offers some sort of mobility guarantee in your market. Would I buy a Sangyong Tivoli? I think I'd rather stick to more established players, especially since there's a lot going on in the segment at the moment. And would you buy a Sangyong Tivoli? Let me know in the comments below. Also comment and rate my video. By rating, I mean giving me a thumbs up, of course. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. New reviews every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.